Do you have an L4, L5 disc bulge or an L5, S1 disc bulge or disc herniation? Well then today I'm gonna to show you five exercises to avoid and I'm gonna give you a ton of exercises to replace them. I'm Dr. Gregory Kramer, corrective care chiropractor in Livonia, Michigan. I've been helping people get out of pain, stabilize their spine so they can live stronger, longer for over 30 years. So right now, you are not in acute phase. If you were in acute pain, a recent injury, then you need to go back to my prior videos uh, to help make sense. You wanna now return to the gym, but you're wondering, what should I do? There's so much information out there. So here's the first rule. In the first three months, we do not load our spine, okay? We do not load that spine the first three months. So that means that if you're lifting weights in the gym, you cannot pick up a dumbbell off the floor. So we really want to avoid that, okay? So the first exercise that we'll, we'll talk about is number one, just how do I, what should I do in gym? So we're not lifting plates, putting them on machines. So if we do a bench press, we're gonna be using a machine bench press, all right? So the first three months, we are not picking up plates. That's n number one. Now the first exercise that we want to avoid is squatting, a barbell squat. And again, I want to get a close up on your disc. Remember, it's flexion and rotation and compression that oozes right there, that disc is bulging out. It's getting sucked back in, oozing out. So look at the spine, we don't want flexion because the tears in the disc allow the inner disc to ooze out. Flexion we avoid, see we're bending forward. Okay, so for instance, we're gonna show a barbell squat and I'm just gonna use a, a bar. So obviously we want to avoid putting anything on our back where we squat. Okay, we're gonna avoid this. So what do we do instead? Okay, number one, we can do body weight squats and I recommend about 90 degree angles. So instead of all the way down, let's just go partial. Okay, we want the spine. If we bend too far, our spine rounds and that we get flexion. We got body weight squats and I recommend until you can do 50 to a chair, we don't need to do any machines, okay? Now, what if that's too easy? What if you're an athlete? Everybody starts off at a different level of fitness. Again, we want to avoid flexion or each segment flexing forward, okay? So could we do a one-legged squat? A one-legged squat is we sit in a chair, lift one leg up, and stand up. Very slow. I don't, and so once you can do 50 squats, you can add that. Another exercise, we can do a lunge. We want to keep the shin vertical at the beginning, not necessarily knees over toes at the beginning, perhaps in six months, and then we just go up and down. Now, could we load it? Yes, we could load it if that's too easy. But again, I don't recommend any loading until after three months. You can do a Bulgarian. Okay, tight stomach, up and down. And notice this is the leg that's lifting me up. This is the glute. So we can load this after three months with some light weight. And because I have a weight in one hand, we're also working the opposite side of the core kind of like we're doing a left side plank. If we're doing a, a plank on your side, we're working the left core. If we put a weight in our right hand, we're working the left side of our core. So we got squats, we got single leg squats, we got lunges, we got Bulgarian lifts, okay? And then at three months, we can start loading with the opposite leg. So again, if the left leg's forward, we can put a light weight in our right hand and we can load that. All right, the next exercise is deadlifting. Now remember, squats and deadlifts are incredibly powerful exercise for strength. However, there's high risk involved. So we're gonna avoid a two-arm, two-leg deadlift for the first six months. And unless you're a competitive power lifter where you have to lift the weight from the floor, remember, from the floor is just arbitrary. Um, it just happens to be something they can regulate in powerlifting meets or in CrossFit uh, games, but it doesn't take into account your flexibility, it doesn't take into account your anatomical lengths of your torso, your hips, your legs. So my recommendations for the average person who wants to get in shape, uh, number one, if we're gonna start deadlifting with the bar, we wait till six months. 
Number two, when we use a bar, we're going to use something called a rack pull. So you would be inside of a power rack or something that elevates the weight. So if this is a weightlifting bar, we're going to start from the knees and just go forward. This is very safe. Again, we won't do this for six months, but when we do lift, we are going to go only to the knee level. Notice how my chest is out, my spine is straight, hips back, hips forward. Again, this is a two arm, two leg. So we're avoiding that for the first six months. So what can we do it instead of? Well, number one, what you can do, you can do bird dogs, which we showed. And if that's too easy, if that bird type of version of bird dog is too easy, then we can do, instead of from our hands and knees, we can go from our hands and our feet. Okay, and obviously we six sides. We also can do a partial range hyperextension. So many of you know that when you lie on a machine in the gym, either it's called a hyperextension machine, depends how old you are, or you might call it if you're a little younger, a glute ham raise. This is similar to it. So this would be an example of an extension exercise. Very easy. We, we put the ball as close to our hips as possible. We anchor our feet on the wall and we just partially bend and come up and squeeze. Small range of motion. Remember, we're avoiding too much flexion. So what we really want is keep our stomach tight and our butt tight and we're just pivoting at the hip. We're not rounding our back especially for the first six months. We are doing a hip hinge. That means we are bending at the hip. My spine is straight. So no matter what we do, whether I'm standing or lying down, we're tight stomach, we're bending at the hip, but we're not going all the way down. Remember, flexion is the risk. Now, what else can you do? Okay, you can do leg curls on a machine for your hamstrings. You can also do a glute bridge and you can lie on your back. I don't recommend loading this for the first three months. Remember our rule, we don't load for the first three months. That would be a glute bridge. At three months, you can load it with bands, with weights. You can get great pieces of equipment from a gentleman named Brett Contreras, okay? And he has great, I think his uh, website is thegluteguy.com. He's got great information on glute training. So again, we got the glute raise, we have a partial range of motion. We can also start practicing one-legged deadlift without weight. So this is where we and that's also working the glute and hamstring. Now, if we add weight, again, we're waiting at least three months, we're gonna add weight with the opposite hand as the leg that's on the ground. So if our right leg is on the ground, we load the left side, we go small range motion. We're not gonna go all the way. Now again, at six months and your flexibility is good, and you can keep a neutral spine. This is a neutral spine, this is not. Okay, one more time. My spine is neutral, it is not bending. Okay, so now we're doing one leg. Now, one-legged exercises have tremendous value. One, they automatically put a governor on how much load you can lift, so it spares your spine. Two, it requires balance, which is very functional, so it's good for ankle and knee, it's very athletic. Three, it's a great stretch for the hamstrings. Four, it increases the activation, particularly of the glutes. So you're gonna get more muscle activation with less joint compression. So from an aging perspective, learning how to do a one-legged deadlift where the weight is in the opposite hand as the foot that's planted on the ground is crucial. And you can load this. And then from a bodybuilding perspective, the weight's in the left hand, my right foot's on the ground. We go partial range, so right about knee level. That means your hand, whether it's a bar, a kettlebell, a dumbbell, We'll go down to about the knee, 
And maybe down the road, after six months, you can go a little further. But again, no load the first three months. Absolutely no barbell the first six months. And unless you're a competitive power lifter or CrossFit Games, I don't recommend you really go below the knee. There's, the risk benefit's not worth it. So again, we're not deadlifting. We can do the glute bridge. We can do the extensions. We can do the leg curls. You can, we can do a number of things. We can also do step up. This works the quad and the glute. All right, I recommend a 90 degree angle the first three months. If you want a higher step where your leg comes all the way up, I would wait about three months because you might get a little bit of spinal flexion. Spinal flexion is bending forward. All right, so we're gonna avoid that. So stepped up is an incredible exercise first three months. Now, so we got, the next thing we want to talk about is leg press. Again, partial range of motion, and I'm going to go over this on the video. When you leg press, we want to stay about 90 degrees. If you go too far, your back rounds, and that stresses your disc. We want to avoid that. So, at three months, again, we're not going to do any loaded exercise before three months. We can do partial range. Partial range is safe. And remember, you're assuming they have no back pain, no leg pain, either during the exercise or afterwards, okay? The next one is a sit-up. We want to avoid sit-ups. We want to avoid flexion of the spine. So what do we do instead? We keep our spine neutral, but we brace. The stomach muscles go from your pelvis all the way up to the sternum, and they flex the rib cage. So in general, we're not going to be flexing the rib cage. We're going to keep it neutral. We're going to be doing planks. We can do something called a McGill curl. This is a very small range of motion, tight stomach, and that's all the motion there is. We're not sitting up all the way like this. We're not doing this. Tighten your stomach, brace, okay? And you're going to put your hands in the small of your back because you want to feel your spine. and you're thinking of really creating tension in the stomach muscles. So we've gone over squat, we've gone over deadlift, we've gone over leg press. Another high risk exercise would be pulley rolls. Even if you're feeling good, even if it's after three months, when we flex the spine, now pretend you're in a gym, you have a cable row, you sit low, and now you're rowing. So even in good form, there's a risk, but a lot of people, if they bend forward, now we're stretching the disc. And now we're stretching the disc under load. So this is pretty high risk. So I recommend we avoid that. One of the things you can do, you can do horizontal rowing using your body weight. You can do TRX bands rowing. You can use it where you have a chest supported, where you do a machine row. And I'll have pictures of these in the video. But one of the things you can do also down the road is you can do a high row. Now remember, a high row is you are, so perhaps at three months, at six months. It's pulling me up, very little flexion. And if I lean back a little bit, we're getting some activation in the spinal muscles, but the risk is low. If the band was down low, now we're pulling in flexion and we're loading that last degree, high risk. Now, maybe not initially, but over time. So I recommend avoiding low rows. Again, if, you're, if it's up high and you lean back, we're not getting flexion, we're creating an extension. After three months, you can test this and see how you do with this. That would be a great exercise. So again, we are avoiding flexion. So within the first three months, we're not putting a weight on a, a, a machine. We're only using pin assisted, like a machine that you can put a pin in. We're avoiding barbell squats. We're avoiding barbell deadlifts. We're avoiding leg press. We're avoiding any loading the first three months. You want to start including single leg movements because they do have tremendous functional value. They have a bodybuilding effect. They have a functional effect. Single leg where you use one arm and one leg, 
whether it's squatting or deadlifting, you also get a stabilizing because you're using the opposite side of your core muscles. Anytime we work balance, you're using the opposite side of the core. So those are some fantastic exercises that you can do. If you like this, if you think this information is helpful, do me a favor, just like and subscribe. And don't forget, check out our next video. Our next video will cover details of some of these exercises we covered.